a bus full of high school football players crashes, plus find out how long the rain will stick around this weekend. And hear what's behind a re record-breaking student population. This is OU Nightly. Hello, thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Jesse Klinger. And I'm Olivia Daig. We begin with scary moments on slick Oklahoma roads when a bus carrying high school football players crashes on the way home from a game. Grace Burgett joins us live in the newsroom with the story. Grace? Cushing High School football bus crashed on their way home from a game in Oklahoma City last night. The bus driver lost control and flipped the side, flipped the bus on its side after veering off the side of the road. The bus was carrying 22 students and two coaches. One student is currently in the hospital with a fractured lower spine, but the rest walked out with minor injuries. I was able to speak with a Cushing High School football player who witnessed the accident from a different bus. Yeah, the roads had were wet and just bad conditions. And uh, you just kind of slipped off the road a little bit and overcorrected and it flipped. A bunch of the people in the second bus jumped out and Broke, like, broke the glass, got him out of there, and I was worried. I was hoping no one got, was dead because it, it looked bad. The Cushing High School football team held a prayer vigil on the field after school today for the hospitalized student. Cushing Public Schools says the student is expected to make a full recovery. Olivia, Jesse, back to you. Thanks, Grace. We're glad everyone made it out okay. It's important to take caution when the roads are wet. And Colton Williams is here to tell us about the rain. Colton, is there more on the way? Yeah, it's no surprise uh, that an accident like that happened yesterday. Check out our rainfall accumulation over the last three days here. Central Oklahoma sending quarter, half an inch here around the metro area. But some mezzanine sites seeing localized areas of two to three inches. Check out Mangum, two and three quarters inches. No surprise there. Cushing sitting right up here in the Lincoln County region. They're sitting uh, in the inch and above category. So that's the first wave headed out. Now you're looking at live water vapor. There's a stationary front sitting overhead. Low pressure system out here over Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's driving everything that's coming over over night tonight and into tomorrow. We're going to have all the details on that and more coming up as well as your game day forecast. For now, ladies, back to you. Thanks, Colton. As of now, more than 1,800 Afghan refugees are expected to come to Oklahoma, but they've left their homes with nearly nothing. Gaylord News reporter Zaria Oates spoke with the co-president of OU's Shia Student Association about their recent donation drive to help feed and clothe incoming refugees. Our group, I think, was just a tool to tell everybody that there's a need. I'm outside of my local grocery store, and that was Delay Uma, a co-president of the Shia Student Association at the University of Oklahoma, an organization that raised more than 200 cans of food in just six days for incoming Afghan refugees. Uma said she initially thought a fundraiser would be the only way to help, but when Muslims for Mercy reached out, she knew there was more to be done. Me as an American, there's people coming in, but as somebody coming in, think of all that you're leaving behind. So she and her fellow executive board set up an Afghan care basket drive, accepting any and all donations, even some they never expected. There was somebody who was DMing us. She's like, I'd like to uh, give you guys a queen size bed. <laughs> And I was like, I just don't know how I'm going to fit that on my car, you know? While a queen size bed may not always be easy to transport, Uma said everyone involved in the drive made it more successful than she ever imagined. It was all the people that collaborated. It was all the people that came and, you know, helped pack the baskets. It was all the people that helped advertise. It was them that made it possible. And it was them that the reason that we have all these donations. Oklahomans are welcoming their new neighbors with open arms and open hearts. From Washington, Zaria Oates, Gaylord News. You can donate directly to Muslims for Mercy at the Venmo account below. All proceeds will go directly to donations. And the Oklahoma State Health Department reports over 1,400 new COVID cases in the state of Oklahoma. That brings the state's active cases to well over 11,000. Oklahoma's death count has hit 10,332. There are only 20 ICU beds and less than 300 inpatient beds available in Oklahoma City. 
a record-breaking number of new students started at OU this semester. OU Knightley's Bell Trevino found out what brought so many students to campus this year. Almost 5,000 first-time students. That's our record-breaking number this year at OU. And OU isn't alone. OSU is seeing a little over 4,000 new first-time students. For OU, the class of 2025 is bringing in the most diverse and highest academics in the 131 years of the university. Although there's some concern for COVID-19 issues, some freshmen are not too concerned about the student population soaring. I think it's exciting. I think it's good. But COVID and everything, I hope it works out well. <laughs> and this is following last year when there was another record breaking of incoming students. Even with COVID-19 shadowing the world, OU still found a way to bring students to campus. OU still allowed campus visits. We did this in a safe manner, of course. Um, we wanted to protect our current students. We wanted to protect our faculty and staff, and we wanted to protect uh, our visitors, of course. Um, but we were able to, to still host campus visits for prospective students. OU President Harris has a plan in place to help continue this upward trend of incoming students through his Lead On plan. Part of that plan is enrolling every year 3% of a greater class. And so um, that's something that we're striving for. This semester, the university is proud and excited for the 25% of first generation and 38% minority representation. Beltrino, OU Knightley. Next year's prospective students have already been touring campus, and enrollment applications are open. Now, vaccines can prevent the virus, but now there's new hope for what some may call a cure. Hear more about the new pill some doctors say can help do away with COVID symptoms if taken right after diagnosis. And a new brewery comes to the Sooner State. Find out where you can enjoy some brews and support a Native American business when OU Nightly continues. I will never forget this day. In this moment, it's as if time itself has stopped for us. The thought of being here with you. When two become one, I will never forget this day. Your opioid addiction affects more than just you. Get help. Visit ok.gov slash health. This is Tehani. She likes to play with her friends and has dreams of becoming a doctor. But when COVID-19 devastated her community, she was taken out of school and forced into marriage at just 12 years old. Tehani and thousands of other child brides are facing domestic abuse, female genital mutilation, and life-threatening pregnancies. And the pandemic is causing these numbers to rise. Too Young to Wed envisions a world where girls are free to simply be children and determine the course of their own lives. Will you help us? This is you at OU. What will you learn? How will you excel? What path will you lead? Who will you impact? What will you do at OU? President Biden is taking action against the controversial Texas abortion law. Bailey Coyle has that story in the rest of today's headlines from around the nation. The Biden administration is urging a federal judge to block the new Texas abortion law. The law banned most abortions in Texas starting in early September. U.S. District Judge Robert Pittman held a hearing today to consider a preliminary injection blocking the law. If he does, some clinics can resume providing abortions. And on the West Coast, California's governor announced that COVID-19 vaccinations will be required to attend school in person. We intend to do that once the FDA has fully approved the vaccine, which will give us time to work with districts, give us time to work with parents and educators uh, to build more trust and confidence and build out a logistics so that we can deliver on what we are promoting here today. The plan is to start the mandate for grades 7 through 12 
next July. And in other COVID news, drug maker Merck said that its experimental pill for those with COVID-19 cut hospitalizations and deaths in half. The company will soon ask health officials to authorize the drug. A decision from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration could come within weeks after asking for approval. And if approved, the drug would be the first oral medicine to fight COVID-19. And lastly, in coronavirus news, Justice Brett Kavanaugh has tested positive for COVID-19. The court says he has no symptoms. That's all for News Center. Back to you two at the desk. Thanks, Bailey. The market is hopping with a new Native American craft beer fresh out of the tap here in OKC. CEO Jacob Keyes is ready to begin his lifelong dream of owning his own tap house, take a lot of Skydance Brewery. Skydance is the first Native American brewery in the metro area, bringing historic culture and a variety of flavorful drinks. We're definitely the first uh, Native brand in Oklahoma. Uh, that's we take a lot of pride in that, so we're proud that uh, Skydance beers are on the shelves at places like Walmart, and it's probably one of the only Native American products you'll see on their shelves, so we're proud of that. The brewery will have its grand opening this Saturday at 11 a.m. with live music, food, and of course, beer. Preparations are soaring for an annual festival in New Mexico. Find out more about this high-flying tradition after the break. And Colton joins us to tell us more about what we can expect for the weekend forecast. Colton. Hey, we've had five-star weather today here on the first day of October, talking about more rain in your game day forecast. All of that and more coming up after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is you at OU. What will you learn? How will you excel? What path will you lead? Who will you impact? What will you do at OU? All right, welcome back to OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colton Williams, taking a live look now towards the Oklahoma State Capitol down Lincoln Boulevard. It's been a five-star day here today on the first day of October, 72 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Today's a day where you want to get outside, enjoy the weather. Here we go across the metro, 75 in Oklahoma City, 73 in Norman, middle to upper 70s for all of us. And that's the same story across the state. Tulsa, Miami, going to be touching 80, but check out Guyman, 63 this afternoon. Still beautiful, feels like fall. And the next wave of rain and storms is on its way. Check out the Texas Panhandle here. Here's I-40 looking northeast of Amarillo. All of this will eventually come into a line, move eastward into Oklahoma overnight tonight. Right along the jet stream here. Here's the jet stream fueled by this low pressure system. Right along the front of that occluded front, we'll see plenty of rain overnight tonight here in central Oklahoma. Here's a look at that by 8 p.m. Showers and thunderstorms could begin to develop along western Oklahoma here. Check out Elk City, Woodward up through that region all the way into the Panhandle. But then as we get into the overnight hours tonight, stronger thunderstorms could develop here in the southwestern part of the state as that moves eastward overnight tonight and into the early morning hours tomorrow morning. Could wake up to a rumble of thunder or two here in central Oklahoma. That'll continue to move out. And by the afternoon hours, it's eastern Oklahoma's problem, central Oklahoma. We 
we are dry tomorrow afternoon after a very healthy dose of some much needed rain. So again, this evening, small chance here, a pop up shower here and there throughout this evening. Western Oklahoma, that's where the main story is. But then as you get into the overnight hours tonight, 90% for all of us here, central, western, southwestern Oklahoma, the morning hours tomorrow, it's ending off to the west here, 10% chance here out in the west as it continues to move eastward. Those chances will decrease and the chances for our friends in eastern Oklahoma will increase. But some data suggesting another one to two inches for some of us locally here across Oklahoma, right up I-44 here, checking out one and to one and a half to two inches overnight tonight. Still Norman predicted to gain at least another three quarters of an inch. We certainly could use it. Overnight tonight still sticking just a bit above average. 64 here in Norman, 63 in Oklahoma City. Middle to upper 50s for the western and northwestern portion of the state. Tomorrow, another day like today, still upper 70s here. Right at average, 79 in Norman, 79 in Oklahoma City. A couple of our friends in the south and southwest will touch 80 tomorrow afternoon. Now, talking about average, here we were at the middle part or the end of part of September above average. As that line continues to ride down today, we have only hit 73 degrees. And as we go throughout the next several days, we'll poke just back up above average over the next several days, but certainly not anything to worry about in terms of high temperatures. Here we go once again tomorrow, 78 thunderstorms, 100% in the morning. As we go into this weekend, upper 70s, upper 80s will return next week. But then as we go into the middle to late next week, talking about upper 70s. That's all I've got, ladies. Back to you. Thanks, Colton. I know I'm looking forward to a bit more rain. And Olivia, it has always been a dream of mine to be in a hot air balloon. Have you ever been in one? No, Jesse, I haven't, but it's on my bucket list. In New Mexico, balloon enthusiasts are getting ready to take the skies. Preparations have begun for Albuquerque's annual balloon fiesta. For nine days, balloons of unique shapes and colors will fill the skies, and organizers say they are taking security extra seriously this year, as they are expecting thousands of visitors. Guests can enjoy events like a chainsaw carving competition, skydiving, and fireworks. We have a break from home games this weekend. Olivia, are you going anywhere to watch the game? You know, Jesse, I'm excited with all of that rain. I think I'm going to just curl up on the couch, just watch TV um, and watch that game. And speaking of the game, Ashley Vandevelde joins us in the studio with what we can expect from tomorrow's kickoff. Ashley? Today on Big Friday Sports, we have a preview of OU Kansas State from the Game Day U team in Manhattan. And Sooner Soccer faces their first opponent after that tough Texas loss. Stick around because Big Friday Sports is up next. One day, this will be your office. You'll track the storms, send out the warning, and save lives. Here too. He'll tell others just like you why you became a meteorologist. But first, you have to become a student. And you'll do that right here at the National Weather Center. It just <laughs> takes a moment to spread from one person to another. So how do you break the germ cycle? Wash your hands often and always after <laughs> coughing, sneezing, handling food, and going to the bathroom. Lather the front, back, and in between for at least 20 seconds. If there's no soap or water available, use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Regularly disinfect common surfaces, including your phone. These small things can help break the germ cycle. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at Feeding America. Hello and welcome.
welcome to Big Friday Sports. I'm Amaya Ward. And I'm Ashley Vandevelde. We are ready to talk some sports because the Sooners are on the road for their first away game of the season. That's right, Ashley. This is a huge game for the Sooners considering they have yet to beat K-State in the Chris Kleiman era. Let's hear what our Game Day U team has to say about the big game tomorrow. What's up, Big Friday Sports? It's your Game Day U team here in the Little Apple. I'm Caroline Grace alongside Kaylee Tinglestad and Ben Thomas. We're going to get right to it here. What can OU expect from K-State tomorrow? I think OU can slow Deuce Vaughn. That's K-State's biggest weapon. And if OU slows him, I think the Sooners can win. I, I like where you're going with that. I think that there's going to be a lot of action shutting down both teams. And with that being said, I'm going with turnovers. I think Kansas State and Oklahoma are both going to produce a lot of turnovers. K-State's going to force Oklahoma to turn the ball over, and that's when Caleb Williams is going to come in. Ben, what do you think? Oh, I don't think that. I think, honestly, K-State could pull off another upset for the third straight year. I think this offense is not clicking for the Sooners, and I think K-State has had the Sooners number the last two years. Why wouldn't they have it again? I hope the Sooners win. I want the Sooners to win, but I definitely could see an upset here because K-State's not a team that the Sooners should take lightly. For two years, Lincoln Riley has been shut down by the Wildcats, and we've had four games to look at these players. Who are you calling out for tomorrow? Well, I'm going to call out DTY, Delarian Turner, Ye Turner, Turner Yell. He needs to step it up. He's the best player on the defense, and every player on the defense needs to play like him. And if they do, the defense will be even better than it already is. I'm going to take it on the other side of the ball, and I'm going to call out Coach Bedenbow. Our offensive line is atrocious right now. He needs to figure out what's clicking. Quit rotating your players and figure out who is getting the job done. I think that our offensive line has not been producing. Something's got to give. It's, get, it's game five. Get it going. Yeah, my call out once again is Spencer Rattler. Rattler, man, you got this. Come on, use that booing. Use that we want Caleb Chances fuel. Fuel that fire and ball out here as we head into Texas. It should be a good one by him, and I don't think Caleb Williams will be in. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into score predictions. Kaylee, take it away. I'm going to go with 31-17. I think it's going to be a somewhat close game, but I think the Sooners will take it home. I've got 20-10 to 10 in the first half. I think it's going to be tied up. Second half comes out. Caleb Williams is going to start. He's going to get it done for the Sooners. Ben, what do you have? I got 24-21 Sooners. If Skylar Thompson was playing, might be a different story, but I think the Sooners will pull out this defensive battle. All right, we're having a lot of fun here in Manhattan. Be sure to check out Game Day U tomorrow, 8 to 9.30 on YouTube Live. Guys, back to you in the studio. Kicking off college football action, the Arkansas Razorbacks are in Athens to face the defensive masterminds that are the Georgia Bulldogs. And looking to extend their record to 5-0, Notre Dame hosts Cincinnati after their bye week. The battle of unbeaten teams will continue with the Ole Miss Rebels traveling to match up against the Alabama Crimson Tide. And lastly, the OK State Cowboys are looking to get another dub competing against the Baylor Bears right at home. And Sooner football isn't the only one playing away as the OU soccer team looks to score a win on the road. The Sooners continue Big 12 Conference play on Saturday as they head to Morgantown to face the West Virginia Mountaineers. The matchup with the number 12 Mountaineers was originally scheduled for tonight. However, due to weather issues, the two are now set to battle tomorrow at 11 a.m. Still to come on Big Friday Sports, we'll be staying close to home where the Friday night lights sure are bright. When we come back, we will preview the biggest local prep games. Stay tuned. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. 
prepared as your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a hurricane. You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. All right, welcome back to Big Friday Sports. If you're heading up to the Little Apple for tomorrow's night or tomorrow afternoon, excuse me, is matchup uh, for the Oklahoma Sooners taking on Kansas State. Take an umbrella. Take a rain jacket because it is going to be a wet one. 64 if you're getting out for the tailgate. The rain will be beginning, and as you go into the kickoff and halftime, rain will continue throughout Manhattan. Ashley and Amaya, what do you got? Thanks, Colton, for that game day forecast. And it is the Sooners' first road game of the season as they travel to Manhattan to face Kansas State. OU lost two of the last consecutive matchups against the Wildcats, so eyes will be on the Sooners to see if they can turn the tide this weekend. Head coach Lincoln Riley expects a physical, tough game. You know, they've changed a couple things around schematically, but you know, still a lot of the same principles that you that you always see. You know, they're good tacklers, you know, they're physical up front, they do a really nice job in short yardage. Um, you know, and they they, uh, they have some some definite creativity defensively. So uh, you know, it's kind of like no matter what scheme they're running, you kind of know what you're going to get out of Kansas State. This group's no different. It's homecoming in Norman as the winless Edmund Memorial Bulldogs head to Norman to face the Tigers, who are 1-3. The Tigers have lost each of their away games, gaining their sole win at home. The Moore Lions are 4-0 as they face Edmund North tonight, who is 2-2. Edmund North heads to Moore after a win against Putnam City last week. And Noble travels to Duncan, eager to notch their third consecutive win, making their record 4-1. Meanwhile, the Duncan Demons hope to bounce back after a three-game losing streak. Now over to some more college football. The Cavaliers escaped the Hurricanes down in Miami Gardens last night for Virginia to steer clear of their first 0-3 start since 2013. Virginia QB Brennan Armstrong threw into a cluster of Miami players in what looked like an interception, only for wide receiver Dontavion Wicks to come up with the ball for a touchdown. What a catch! And Miami drove 75 yards down the field, only to miss a 33-yard field goal as time expired, leaving Virginia to win 30-20. In a battle of number one overall picks, Joe Burrow and the Bengals took Trevor Lawrence and the Jags last night. The Bengals were scoreless in the first half, but put their foot in on the gas after halftime. Joe Burrow completed nearly three-fourths of his passes for Evan McPherson to nail a 35-yard field goal, giving the Bengals the 24-21 win. That's all we have this week on Big Friday Sports. Be sure to watch Game Day U live tomorrow at 8 a.m. And the Sooners are on Fox tomorrow afternoon. That's what we have for Big Friday Sports. I'm Ashley Vandevelde. I'm Amaya Ward. Have a great night.